All right, thank you, everyone. And now we have Pierre Pilon, who will be talking about the quality of OpenStreetMap data with respect to buildings. Some of you uh, know me as Pierre Zen. I started uh, collaborating to OSM with uh, IT in 2010. From 2012, all uh, the, the major uh, OSM responses for disaster, I did coordinate. So I have a lot of experience with uh, mapping projects, tasking manager projects, thousands of contributors coming and coming and making a lot of errors. And we started to be worried with Nepal. With 8,000 people in one month, we realized that there was a lot of map at home with unexperienced mappers. This did create us a lot of problems. Validators said we, we don't want to validate buildings anymore. It's so terrible. Then I see uh, in various other places more and more. And la last year with uh, Claire Allure, which is just sits here, Claire Allure from OpenStreetMap uh, Congo, we started a project to, uh, to support Open City in Kinshasa. At the same time, Ebola started in north of Kivu. So we, we had to go back to north of Kivu. In 2012, with Claire, we already had mapped that area around uh, Goma. And so again, we had to take care of that. We decided we will develop a, a tool to, to monitor data quality with buildings. It's not easy. Uh, some, some elements are already in, uh, in the data quality tools such as Osmos. Even GOSM uh, does a lot of things, uh, to topological errors, things like that. But about geometry, what can you do about geometry? What is a right angle? What is an irregular angle? Uh, you, you, you have to play with that. So my solution was to measure the angles and the, and say if an area, I, I, I take a B box or a funny area, and if I have too, too many irregular angles, then I should, should look closer. So that's it. basically what I will show to you. I, I won't enter too much in detail of the, the functions of the PostgreSQL, uh, PostGIS uh, function. We'll talk more about what we try to to identify and what we can do with that, what we cannot do with it, the limits of models like that. And we, we have not only the, the mappers, we also have now the imports, the AI uh, projects themselves can create some problem. So I will talk briefly about that also. And at the end, if I have time, I will show you the, the various tools. On, it's already on GitHub. We also have a, 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 a blog, uh, Open Data Lab, the RDC, uh, we, we did publish last year some analysis. Uh, so in the publication, you will have all the, the details about this. So as, as I was saying, uh, you, you have the address here. On Open Data Lab, DRC, GitHub, EO. Uh, geometry and precision, you, you, you have an example here. We see a lot of these. Uh, in general, these are rectangular buildings that have been traced by new mappers. They come for one hour, two hours, three hours, and they leave a lot of problems like that. So you try to identify, identify area where th there's a lot of these problems. The same with uh, intersections, self-intersection, invalid polygons. Uh, that's another problem to identify. And to, as compared to Osmos, the objective also is to not to look at one building at a time, but to have an overview of your, when you manage a big project, you, you, know, you need to know what is the situation about the data quality. You need, you need some metrics. And these are examples taken from, from the data where we have, and it also shows the type of output that come, come out of the, of the tool. Uh, you see here that we have been able to identify uh, buildings that uh, overlaps over each other, overlaps over the road. And the, the blue ones, it's, uh, it, let's say I take a, a historical file uh, a year ago, 
I look at it and I can place it over, in the background it's the data as it is today. So I can use overpass or I can create a geo JSON file from, from PostGIS. Another case here, uh, also it's tag area egal yes, no building tag. It looks like buildings. <laughs> I'm, I mean, more or less. <laughs> uh, and another problem comes with imagery. More we have imagery, more we have problems. We, we sometimes have old imagery, a new imagery is not as good, it does not have the same offset. And if you have various groups that come to collabor collaborate and start to use the various images, you have conflicts of edition like that. One group traces a building, the other group traced quite differently, and they leave all of these there. And it can stay there for years. Uh, especially in Africa, in country where there's no, not many uh, uh, contributors, local contributors, if you don't go back, if you don't have a good process with all these mapathons, then, then, then the, the database is impacted in the area. And with Claire, the, in, in uh, uh, what is his name, Frédéric Moine, Frédéric Moine did work for who he was in Butembo. There was an emergency and they told us the data is terrible. We cannot do anything with this data. And we look at it, we measure inform the information with, uh, with our tool. We could go daily and see how it evolved. And we had to take the, take the decision. We scrap this and we restart. Uh, so so the, you see the type of data we had, it was, it was just impossible. And, and every day it was worse and worse. So we reused the tasking manager start from the beginning. That, that, that time we said we only want experienced mappers, no beginners. We'll see again in detail. Uh, last year I, I took 15 tasking managers that, that were uh, mapped in uh, August uh, 2008 and they were evaluated the, the, there were contributors that validated through the tasking manager. You, you would expect to have a better quality if it has been validated. And it shows how the tools can be used. Uh, the, these uh, 15 projects did vary a lot. You, you had one, one in particular a project, a, a t tasking manager 1475. Uh, Sixty percent of the buildings were identified as irregular. What I call regular is uh, either an angle is between 88 percent and 92. I accept a variation of two degrees from 90. Or if it's an hexagon, octagon, a regular angle again, I would accept a two degree variation. Then we call these regular. The other we call irregular. Sir, there are irregular buildings, but in general, three, five percent, not 60 percent. When, when you see something like that, you go back to the data and you see example like I did show before. Other project, it did vary less, uh, but you see rapidly either a project in particular or an area in particular, you, you can monitor rapidly with, with uh, such tools. And example here where you see uh, buildings and, and uh, duplicates are not detected one year later. I, I, I re-ran uh, uh, last month, I re-ran this and I see that it's still there. And on the right, uh, you see that, uh, oh, so I don't see the same thing. Oh, I see the next, around the, okay. I, on my screen, I have two images. I see the next image. <laughs> Here's the one. Uh, with, with JOSM, you can click on, on any polygon and, and have the information. You see here uh, that there's even duplicates. 
people are not only overlapping, but also creating duplicates. Uh, that's, that's a lot of problem like that. And this year, I wanted to compare ver versus the tasking manager. I showed the uh, 16 towns around the world, Cambridge, UK, uh, Heidelberg, uh, Kyoto, Japan, uh, etc. Uh, in, uh, and I, I, I thought even if I take uh, dense cities, it would be uh, quite different from beginners using the tasking manager. But then I had another surprise. It's, uh, I, I see you can, you, you have more complex uh, data uh, schema in, in cities, like 3D schema, people that don't tag properly. You, you have land use uh, tags that overlap buildings or other, other type of, uh, of, of polygons. You have uh, imports uh, where uh, a lot of problems arise. I did compare Toronto with Dallas. Toronto was data provided by Statistic Canada, and I found 54% of the buildings that did have irregular uh, angles. Dallas, which comes from Microsoft, only 14%. So you would think that uh, Microsoft is better than uh, Statistic Canada. We'll come back. <laughs> and we also, I also found a lot of layers collision in Cambridge and Kyoto. I will show you some examples. See, we can, we can uh, identify the buildings that, uh, uh, that share nodes, that they are adjacent and uh, they are connected. And if it's a town has a lot of these buildings, I think it's more complex and you have more risk to, to uh, have problems. So here I show the area of Toronto that I didn't analyze. And another problem was that uh, the data did have excess uh, detail over straight line. A lot of points and not always uh, on a straight line. And th that, that was important as is. Uh, I think it, it's, not, it's not okay, it should be clean. Example here in Cambridge, uh, a college or a university. Oh no, here it's a commercial area. So you see, uh, you see these uh, 3D schema where uh, buildings uh, are not identified uh, in, in, uh, inside. So it's a part of the building. And here, here you, you see uh, retail polygons that overlap uh, buildings. The second example, it's a university land, which the retail across the, the land. In Kyoto, you have here, this first slide, I show the overlaps of buildings. The, the second slide, I show buildings overlap with, with uh, uh, three, three uh, polygons. You, you see the it's, it's quite square, but a lot of problems. So, geometry classification, how to analyze the angles. So I give the details. So 82 to 92, I call it uh, regular. Then the second one is quasi-regular or irregular. Uh, so it, it's, it's more, more for analysis to see how we spread the data. And we, we classify the information and we, we, we then uh, attribute variables uh, in the model. Um, here I give examples. I, I had, uh, in my sample of the, all these uh, towns, uh, area, I had 2.7 million buildings. It's not a fair uh, sample because some area, we, you have a lot of buildings, some area are small, but still, it gives an idea. For 15 million angles, I have, on, I have uh, 1.7% of these points are on a straight line. So you can have a line where there are points sometimes, that's okay, but you, don't, you would not count that as angles. Then the regular angles, that's almost 92%, 93 if I, I don't take care of the, the, the points on the straight line. 
And so in general, uh, the irregular are, are uh, relatively, relatively small. Six percent of the uh, of the the angles are irregular. But as I showed before, it varies a lot from one project to the other. So I will go uh, further. Okay, so the the data is published on on GitHub. It's so. Uh, I, here I see open that ODBL, and you think that we evidently do from OpenStreetMap is ODBL. Um, the, the type of functions that w we see here, it's quite simple. The, it's, it's inside PostgreSQL, it's a function, so you just need to call a function like here, select, ex, uh, select from Toronto, Canada, and uh, that's it, it will produce the result. Example of the result here, I'm using a JSON variable that's more flexible to enter many analysis variables. If later we want to revise, it will be easy to add one more variable in, into it. And I identify buildings and other uh, polygons, uh, one day geometry of buildings and also uh, compare buildings, uh, the buildings uh, polygons that, that cross each other. The, the workflow, uh, there's a script where uh, you uh, import the data into uh, PostGIS using the Osmosis Schema. It, it's easy, uh, I, I should publish later, but I, I have other script. Myself, I go directly from overpass. I have a step where I read from overpass, then, then pass this to, to PostGIS. It's how I can uh, analyze uh, many areas at the same time. And, then in, in PostGIS, as we saw, it's a simple function to produce the indicator. From there, you can analyze or uh, uh, publish with a GeoJSON format. Publish the, the polygons, the buildings. So the documentation is on GitHub, Pierre Zen OQ analysis. There's the script and various uh, documentation. And uh, what insists on the PostGIS function. Uh, I thought I had an example uh, for uh, the import. I, I said I would come back. Uh, this week I found that uh, Microsoft uh, did publish uh, new uh, buildings uh, for uh, uh, Africa. And on the blog, you look at the image, you see that the buildings are rectangular, they correct it, but it doesn't correspond with the, uh, what you see in the background. And discussing with the developers, we see that there are problems. Even if you work with AI, it's not perfect. It depends the imagery you are using. You have various problems possible with that. And it was evidently uh, uh, image quality uh, there. While in, in Dallas, it did look a lot better. So we still need to, to be careful about these various uh, import projects. So that's my presentation. We'll pass to questions. Thank you so much, Pierre. Uh, <laughs> so do we have any questions? It's um, just a comment. So my name is Claire, I'm from OSMDRC. We've been uh, working with, uh, I mean, collaborating with Pierre for about eight years, and I met him for the first time yesterday. So that's something, yeah, in person. Um, so in a, in a country like DRC, where it's huge, and there are lots of different mapping initiatives, where most of them are coming from external initiatives to the OSM community. It's been a really useful initiative and tool to be able to make some more gardening and quality checks across the country in areas rather than just at the object level. And it showed where there were, I mean, tasks with a suspicious uh, number of edits that were done. And so 
Um, if you are in a similar situation or willing to do some more quality checks, I think it it's, can be pretty useful. Raise your hand so we know where to go next. Uh, thank you. I'm uh, Janet Mapping Tanzania with uh, many similar issues. Um, thank you for that. It was really useful. I wondered if you had any advice about the best way after you've found all this terrible data, what, what, what to do with it? Uh, the problem comes from the, the, the start. Uh, often with Mapaton, you have too many inexperienced people that come from one hour, two hour, three hour. You don't have time to learn any. They map right away. And they never come back to OSM, the hit and run, what we call the hit and run. Uh, and it's, that's, that's a huge problem. And I, I saw it from, as I said, from Nepal, I saw it. It's, it's more and more and more. There is more. They say we need for this crisis, for this crisis, for, for this vaccination program, etc. But they, the people that start these projects, they don't assure the, that people are trained well. They don't assure a good coordination. The tasking manager is very good to uh, escalate and have a lot of people, but not enough coordination. So, uh, ID people the trace uh, uh, by end uh, buildings in ID is, is where you see all these geometry. In GeoSM, it's a lot easier to trace a, a building. And what's the solution? There are, there are probably many, but we have to do it at the start. The same with the import data. Uh, it's easy to correct it to make it uh, square, but does it uh, correspond to what you see on the imagery? That's another subject. Um, hi, thank you for your presentation. It was very interesting. Um, I work in the area of research, um, engineering specifically, so we're very interested in buildings. Um, I was wondering if in your tools you had, um, or, or if you have any thoughts about uh, how to identify and or deal with the cases in which several buildings are just modeled as one polygon in the map. Um, if you have any ideas on how to deal with these cases. I, I don't understand your question. If buildings are? So in, in many cases, uh, we, we, ha we have had the chance to see many cases in which buildings that in reality are separate buildings are mapped together as just one big polygon. Like for example, when you have terraced houses or even, even cases in which it's obvious from when you see the buildings that it's different structures. They are all modeled as just one we, building, no, one polygon. I, I, Claire, I don't know if, what, what will be your opinion myself. No, I have not seen that many uh, situations, no. It's true that if buildings are individual, it's easier to, to trace. You will have more problem in dense cities. But in general, they, I won't see them make a big block. People are tracing individual buildings, but then they overlap each other and then you start to have a lot of problems like that. OK, thank you. Thank you so much, Pierre.